of the four that I am mm -hmm. filming today. And I got food this time. And I did wash my face. I thoroughly washed my face since I have hair that's covering my forehead now. So I am getting pimples like right here. And yeah. Like it's so soft and it's not dry at all and I love it. Well it's a little dry already here, but I got food. I got bagel cereal cereal I was spelled out cheese pizza and I also had a hard boiled egg and also some grapes. So yeah, I had a balanced breakfast. I'm having a balanced breakfast at 11 a.m. So let's let's get started, shall we? This video will go up a week from today. It'll be like a scheduled thing. And then I'm filming two more videos after this. So yeah, I have basically planned out a month's worth of videos that I'm going to film all in one day. Hang on. Okay. This is going to be Matrice Richardson. And this article was written in 2011, so it's, see, it's dated. But I don't think that anything like new has come up about the case. But as no one ever said anything for me. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. A recent college graduate, she was jailed briefly for trying to skip out on a dinner tab in Malibu, then freed in the middle of the night in a neighborhood like far from her house. She had no car, no ride, no phone, and no money. When she disappeared, it raised a flurry of questions about how the sheriff's department handled, hand handled her case. And the discovery of her body, her dead body, raised more. The rangers found the corpse shortly past 12 o'clock on a warm day in August of 2010. They were deep in Dark Canyon on the 818 side mm -hmm. of the Santa Monica Mountains, inspecting a marijuana farm. 
that had allegedly been run by a Mexican cartel. Yeah, I just said so many illegal things in that one sentence. They were familiar with the farm just over a year earlier, the LA Sheriff's Department had flown over Dark Canyon, spotted the grow, along with a pair of others in the Malibu region. Swaps of ganja had been planted in spring and left to mature until the late summer harvest. After the fly over, the farms were raided, and as expected, the, grow- the growers were absent, and a thousand plants were uprooted, uprooted in Dark Canyon alone. So yeah, lots of money just for us uprooted. And the Dark Canyon is a sensible place for a pot farm. Located near Calabasas. It's less than 80 miles from the 101 freeway, yet it's rugged and seldom traveled, so. No one goes there. No one actually goes there. Hemmed in, a, hemmed in by private and federal land, it begins at the top of Puma Road and descends from south to north. With a boulder strewn creek, dark creek, running the length of the lush canyon bottom, besides a blip of the Santa Monica Mountains backbone trail. That crosses the lower part of the drainage. There are no official footpaths in the wet season. Poison oak is unavoidable year round with narrow canyon floor. Here on the, nar- the narrow canyon floor is rifled with white oaks and the scraggly loyal sumacs. sumacs. You don't stroll along Dark Creek, you negotiate it, hopping, climbing, concentrating. Like, it's not easy to, like, get over. And on this summer day, the rangers were making sure the pot operation had remained dysfunctional, like defunct. Some equipment was lying around, hundreds of feet of garden hose that once siphoned creek water into spigoted PVC pipes, like PVC lines. But all, like, the cannabis was gone. Satisfied that the growers hadn't replanted, the rangers headed downstream Negotiating a series of boulders, they detoured through a wide clearing about 60 feet up slope from the creek, from the creek bed. Then they noticed the skull and beneath the leaf debris and dirt a semi-decomposed naked body.
the men radio and state 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 parks dispatch which alerted the Malibu Flash Lost Hills Sheriff Station, the LASD substation that handles law enforcement in the area. It was now up to deputies to call the coroner and head to Dark Canyon and guard the remains. Soon everyone's hunch would be confirmed. This was the body of Matrice Wilson Richardson, the 24-year-old who disappeared, disappeared a year prior after being released from the Lost Hills station in the middle of the night with nothing but the clothes on her back. Finally, it seemed the case of the missing woman would be closed. Undeterred Lacey Sutton, Flatsy, Flatis, Flatis, L-A-T-I-C, please someone tell me. <clears throat> Latsy Sutton, student in Dark Canyon near the Montenito neighborhood where her daughter, daughter was last seen. There she was, young, beautiful, zipping along PHC, PCH, in her 3098 Civic, watching the sun set, the sun sink on a Wednesday evening, evening in September of 2009. That's when Matrice saw the sign surrounded by palm trees, its blue cursive with letters aglow. Jeffries, like G E O F F R U I S, Jeffries. Joffries? Jeffries. <sighs> Just below Pointed Doom in Malibu, the restaurant is, re is regarded for its four star reviews of the Pacific. Patrice didn't know Joffries and she didn't know Malibu. She knew uh, Kova. Covina in the suburbs east of LA where she grew up with her mother and stepfather. She knew Fullerton where she graduated with honors from Cal State Fullerton with a degree in psychology the year before in 2008. She knew Long Beach where she worked Friday nights as a go-go dancer she knew South LA, where her father, father lived and where she resided with her great grandmother at eight at one eighteenth and central. Malibu was not Matrice's turf. She appeared harmless, but to play it safe, the valet warned the hostess she might that she seemed pretty weird. Sitting at her table, Matrice order, ordered it an ocean blue cocktail and a Kobe steak. She wasn't alone for long, drawn to the chatter coming from a table of seven. Matrice seated herself there and tried to join the conversation yammering unintelligibly about astrological signs. A staffer checked in with the patrons. Everything was fine, one indicated. Bizarre, but manageable. Though Matrice went back to her table to eat, she returned later to Jabra more. She was going to Hawaii, she announced, and would contact them when she arrived. After the seven diners had actually, you know, left, Patrice then started walking towards the entrance where 
or a manager instructed her and asked how she planned to pay the $80 tab. The other table should have covered her, she explained, but the manager informed her that this was not the case. Am I busted? She said. What are we going to do? As the manager, manager spoke to her. As the manager spoke to her, Matrice gazed at the numerical patterns on the restaurant computer screen as if in a trance. She told him that she was from Mars and remarked about settling her debt with sex, emptying her pockets to prove she had no money. Matrice unearthed a joint, mm -hmm. at which point a staffer contacted the Lost Hills Sheriff's Station. Sheriff's Station. We have a guest here who is refusing to pay her bill, she told the dispatcher. But she, Matrice wasn't refusing, she just couldn't because her wallet was in the car. And then they remarked that she sounds really crazy, she might be on drugs or something, but... I don't know. I mean, she did have a joint on her, but... <laughs> Joints don't make you do that. While the sheriff's deputies were en route, Matrice told the hostess that she'd been watching a soap opera, soap opera at work when God instructed her to take the afternoon off. She had no parents, she said, just her great-grandmother, Mildred. The hostess called Mildred, who offered her credit card number, but the restaurant required a signature. Which, you know, family members can sign things that they use, like their credit card. I mean, I do it all the time for my mom. Whenever she sends me out to get things, I sign for her. And yeah, I, I have a card and I sign for her because like at the end, you have to like sign for it. She was still on the, on the line at about 9 p.m. when Lost Hills deputies Frank Bauer, Armando Lorello, and John McKay arrived at the and the manager described Matrice's strange behavior. One of them got on the phone with Mildred and then gave it over to Matrice, who sounded unfazed by the trouble she got herself into. You put that phone close to your ear. Mildred said to her, they're getting ready to take you, take your whack ass to jail. Mildred, my honey, no. After Mildred hung up, the old woman called her granddaughter, Latsy Sutton. The mother, Matrice, had claimed that she didn't have.
employees at Jeffrey's, at Joffrey's considered paying Matrice's bill so she could walk with only a misdemeanor ticket for pot possession, which $89 from Jeffrey's to, like, pay a bill that someone couldn't be, like, physically pay. I like, guess you no problem with like getting someone's tab as long as it's not like outrageous. But yeah. But they concluded she wasn't safe on her own, not operating a car, not acting so saying so strangely. And the manager elected to press charges. He's too shaken up to like say much about Matrice these days. Too much guilt, too many death threats. And the blogosphere comments like, Joffrey's kills black women. Like, oh my god. At that time, you didn't, you don't know whether someone's going to die or not once they leave your place. Like, they didn't know. That manager did not know what would happen to her. Like, hello. He, he told local reporter Juliet Ellerton that handling the treat handing Matrice to sheriff's department, sheriff defi- sheriff's deputies, was almost like a blessing to my heart at that point. Like, okay, good. This is all going the way that it should. Like, you don't expect someone... So they take her to Agora Falls, like a patch in patch of suburbia near Agora Falls, Gore Hills, Hills. It's the same facility where, where Mel Gibson, Gibson was taken for his 2006 drunk driving arrest and later given a ride to his car by the by deputies. That is reason reason that if Matrice was going to be locked up all night, she May as well just, like, let her other daughter, 10-year-old Mia, sleep rather than schlep her to the station and wait till, to wait till sunrise. And besides, and besides, she thought a night in jail might be a dose of tough love, a chance for Matrice to think about her life, the, and the deputy on the phone assured that her, that Matrice would be safe at the station. I think the only way I will come and get her tonight is if you guys are going to release her tonight. But it said she she definitely she's not from that area. I would hate to wake up to a morning report girl lost somewhere with her head chopped off. Okay, so this is where they like release her out into the world. The trailer released Matrice at 12.15 a.m., 15 minutes after midnight on a Thursday. 
40 miles from home with no cell phone, no money, and no way of getting home or like getting a cab or a bus. So no transportation whatsoever. The closest open businesses are a mile away by foot. Out of view from the station with mm. nothing in between mm. except empty sidewalks and commercial buildings that shut down at night. A moment after talking to the jailer, Let Latisse called the station a again and spoke with Deputy Kenneth Baumgartner. How long before a missing persons report can be filed? She, she can be heard asking on the recording. Is it 24 or 48 hours? Well, it depends on the circumstances, Baumgartner replied. Normally, I wouldn't recommend doing one that soon, but Baumgartner didn't know about Matrice's arrest or release at that time, so Matrice filled them in. Again, she inquired about the time frame for a missing persons report. You know, I guess probably 24 hours would be reasonable, Baumgartner told her. I mean, if there would be any migrating factors, you know, where you would suspect maybe something is, isn't right, is it like quite correct? That's when Latisse Sultan literally break, begins crying on the phone to this deputy. Well, yeah, she doesn't know the area. She's never been there before. She's never been the area before. Then they're just like, oh, I'll possibly wait, you know, till early this morning. And if she doesn't turn up, you can certainly call. Mum Gardner advised, sobbing, Latisse told him that she believed her daughter to be highly depressed and in a depressive state. Which coincides with the theory that she did have a bipolar issue, a bipolar disorder, which saddens to know, but... People do have depression, anxiety, bipolar depression, bipolar disorder. And it's not their fault. They can't help that. There is medicine to like they to like actually like help them function while they're in like their highs and lows, but it doesn't fully cure it. There's something on the back of my neck. So, anyway, Bum Gardner tried to sue Latisse and, Latisse and suggested, you know, like, why don't you wait a couple of hours and give us some time to make sure Matrice isn't asleep in the lobby? Then why don't you give us a call back in a couple of hours, and, she, and if she hasn't shown up mm -hmm. or made some type of contact with you, then maybe we should... Maybe we can do something for you. Maybe we can? No, uh, it's a should. Maybe we should do something for you. And then an hour later at 6.30 a.m., Lost Hills received a call from Bill Smith, a retired KTLA reporter who lives in uh, Monte Nido, a bucolic community of, house pro of horse properties. 
and private hiking trails that lies about six miles west of the state of the station and at the bottom of Dark Canyon. We had a prowler walking around through the backyard here, but we don't know what the situation was, Smith told the dispatcher. He described the trespasser as a slim African-American woman with Afro-style hair. Smith then recounted how he opened his window and asked the woman if she was okay. She said, I'm just resting, he explained. When Smith went to another window to get a clearer glimpse of her, she was gone. Just like, poof. Law still sent a cruiser to the house, but they weren't able to find anyone. Deputies didn't issue a be on the lookout alert for another six and a half hours. Which was, which by the time that they did that, it was too late. Patrice had vanished. It was possibly already dead at that point. And then it talks about like her early years. I'm just like reading all this, like glancing over it. Okay. This just talked about like her parents and all that. Yeah, you know, like their parent and like her parents in high school and stuff, like caring for her. And her dad, uh, Michael Richardson, as a Chevrolet, Chevrolet Impala that says, still rolling with my daddy. And it has Patrice's picture on the back with angel wings. And the link is www.bringmatricejustice.org. So, like, that's pretty fun. Um, or real things. So the sheriff's, like, back to the story. The Sheriff's Department waited two days after Matrice's release to conduct its first search rather than deploy scent dogs from the station to determine whether she got in a ride or walked these six miles to Montenito. Searchers started at the 
location last seen, which was Bill Smith's house. Out front, they found tracks of Matrice's sneakers, and it appears she'd been running, but they lost the pattern, the pattern along shoe and hoof prints fewer than 100 feet from Dark Creek. The officers didn't even hike into Dark Canyon, And because Matrice was an L.A. Res- resident, the investigation beca- became the responsibility of the LAPD, like the missing persons unit of the LAPD. Although the sheriff's department remained heavily invo- involved, three days into the, shir- into the search, the case was reassigned again to the LA- LAPD's robbery homicide division because officials explained that office had better resources. It was not the, it was not. They assured everyone a homicide investigation. When the LAPD got a hold of journals from Matrice's Civic, they concluded that she'd been sleep deprived for several days and could be suffering from a bipolar episode the night of her arrest. Police also found her ATM card, checkbook, and cell phone in the car. So, Prescott involved, yada, yada, yada. The parish was want their daughter back, and they wanted answers, like, how could deputies let a woman loose in the middle of the night in a remote area with nothing but her driver's license? Why didn't they take her unusual behavior seriously? Why does Mel Gibson get to ride to his car, but not a black girl, black girl from Watts? Uh, a well-placed source provided the author of this thing with the context of the email in which Chu says the arresting deputy Luriro booked Matrice because she wanted to make sure because he wanted to make sure she was all right. She was a little ditzy at the Joffrey's and a deputy checked her for intoxication wasn't drunk, but Lurio felt she was acting un- unusual and was uneasy about letting her go. Chu noted in the in the end, Lurio brought her because of her instincts. The fact that she disappeared disappeared validated his instinct. Yet Chu concluded that. The email, by rationalizing the missteps that led to Matrice's disappearance at the station, it became obvious she was well-educated and intelligent, he wrote, so there was nothing to justify keeping her overnight. Oh, and there was an update on the, on 3 15 2012 I said, I recently obtained a hard copy of the email, which can be read here, and I'm not going to click the link. Okay. 
because I'm getting kind of tired of talking and might take a break, might nap, might finish my food and then nap. So, Sheriff's Department and LAPD personnel chased false leads from Beverly Hills to Chino Hills. Uh, three months would pass before Matrice's family was allowed to view the footage at LASD headquarters. It took that long because of the department saying technical difficulties. Batiste said that her daughter appeared agitated and distressed. However, the video was edited, leaving the family to wonder what had been cut out. For instance, one moment, Retrice is holding a piece of paper, and according to those, those permitted to see the tape, the next in the next, the papers appeared to be on the floor, crumbled. Why won't they show us how that piece of paper got that way? Like, that's a big thing. Actually... When they withhold information, it causes suspicion. Did they cut out important footage? But like the sheriff's department may still be have condensed the video for an outside audience and refuses to clarify why the footage was trunksted. 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 And has not provided the unedited version. It might need to take a few lessons from me because I just believe everything in because I don't care. Like, I can't tell which side that I prefer more, like this side or this side, because like they're both. Uh, I think that they're both like the same exact length. No. Okay. Okay, so on July twenty on July ninth, two thousand ten. One month before Rangers found Matrice's body, Kanako's office issued a confidential report to the board. The 58-page document was leaked right after Matrice's remains were, were discovered. In it, the OIR declares that Matrice's questionable behavior including included going to a restaurant, ordering a meal, parking valet, and leaving without a means to pay, but does not acknowledge the... Deputy Lirio's alleged remark about Matrice's odd statements. Rather, the OIR determines that the Lost Hills deputies didn't endanger Matrice by releasing her and cites to the Sheriff's Manual, which states, Misdemeanor prisoner shall be released in the field whether, whenever it is reasonable and safe to do so. The report excludes two California penal codes, about filing missing persons reports, one of which states, it is the duty of all law enforcement agencies to immediately assist any person who is attempting to make a report of a missing person, and the other of which states, the local sheriff or sheriff's, the local police or sheriff's department shall immediately take the report and make an assessment of, regional, of reasonable steps to be taken to locate the person. 
the latter code, in fact, requires more stringent measures when it comes to missing persons who have no history of disappearing or are mentally unstable or both. The OIR document also claims that Deputy Baumgartner explained the procedures for filing a missing persons missing missing persons report to Lattice. Of course, according to the audio released by the department, he simply told her that if she called back in a couple of hours, maybe we can do something for you. So yeah. So, found the body going to the coroner's office on July 13th of 2011, after six months of pressuring the coroner's office, Gladys found herself at Inglewood Park Cemetery, watching Matrice's casket, casket be dug up. Her family and a few friends stood close by out as Alex bound jets cut through the, the marine layer, eyeing the growing pile of dirt that she saw the orange bandana that Michael had thrown into the grave. A sartorial mark of the crypt gang, which he'd been affiliated with over the years. As the cement encased casket was hoisted into the back of the flatbed bound for the sheriff's crime lab, LASD and coroner's personnel departed in a convoy of unmarked Crown Vicks. That that the exam would be done at, by the LASD's own crime lab wasn't ideal to Latisse, but she said, all I can hope is that they do the job with integrity and get some answers. Maybe they'll determine a cause of death, maybe they won't, but I but at the very least they can rule out they can rule things out. Which is far more than anyone has done so far. Whatever they find, Latisse isn't expecting the results to lessen her grief. Patrice won't be coming back. The cramped family room of Latisse's home, a 1950s bungalow in the San Gabriel Valley, is filled with images of her oldest daughter, overshadowing those of Patrice's half-sister. Mia, after all, is in the here and now, 13 years old and soft-spoken. She's a ringer for a big sister and a good kid, but her mother, but her mother can't stop worrying. She even drives behind Mia at a distance when, when she ambles down a sidewalk in their neighborhood. Mia's at that age where she wants to be independent and walk to school, that she says, but I'm not ready to let her do that alone, and I'm not sure I ever will be. Which is valid. I think that if they just held Matrice overnight, you know, like they promised her mother they would, then maybe she would be alive today and she would be getting the help that she needs, maybe. Like, there's so many what ifs and like maybes in this that is just sad. And I hope that more things come out about this. And I hope that other African-American women or African-Americans in general don't, like, don't go through what this family went through. Like, they don't know what happened to their daughter that night. 
They don't know what killed her or who killed her. They have no answers whatsoever. And that grief is, and that grief, and that experience is going to stay with them their entire lives. That mother is forever paranoid for her other daughter because of police officers not keeping their promise. So, yeah. That was the second video. I am tired. I did not eat the pizza. I ate the bagel and the cereal. It's usually going to stay there for a little bit while I nap. Or, like, just rush in general. And the next video that I will be filming today, video three, would be Gary Heinwick. <clears throat> Gary Heinwick. And I think I'm going to do like some SFX. X, I got the hiccups out. Oh my god. <laughs> because there is a picture that I want to do. <laughs> That's in my phone. Lupin. Remus Lupin. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this video will be up next next week. So make good choices. Don't be like queen. Don't be like queen of me because don't because she's transphobic. She's a racist and she dead names a lot of people. So yeah, don't be like that. Don't idolize serial killers. Uh, be a good person. If you suspect that someone is going through a hard time, reach out to them. Please, they would appreciate it. I, I would appreciate it. As always, Miss Monday signing off. I'm going to nap. Bye. -bye.